Hello, everybody. We live in a 30-second world, and with nearly 10,000 breweries in operation, it can be challenging to stand out from the crowd. In this conversation, we're going to dive in the role photography can play in differentiating your brand and ultimately leading to more guests in your tap room and more guests buying your product off the shelves. But first, let's meet our panelists and please tell us what you do in the world of beer and how photography is part of your background. And Bryant, because you are to the right of me, you get to go first. Sounds good. My name is Bryant Vanderweerd, uh, founder and creative director of Full Pour Media. Uh, currently based in Madison, we've got presence in Denver as well as in St. Louis as well. So uh, across the nation, uh, a lot of what we do is kind of like that full A to Z digital marketing um, strategy, all the way down to the content creation side that we're going to uh, dive into today. And that's kind of my bread and butter. I mean, my background is in video production and photography and really kind of got my start in the industry doing beertography, doing beer photography for social media, uh, kind of content creation for websites, et cetera. So certainly uh, excited to dive into this super nerdy topic with all of you. So it sounds like full poor media does a little bit more than just pulling out your cell phone and taking a picture. Uh, two cell phones, actually. There's two of them back to back. Yeah. <laughs> you are fancy. Warren, your turn. Yeah. Hey, what's up? Tough to follow up, Brian. Jeez. Uh, I'm Warren Bondi with Beer Marketeers, uh, founder, co-founder, CMO, whatever you want to call me. Um, we are a full service marketing agency in the beer, wine, and liquor industry. Um, we've dedicated ourselves to this, come from distribution. Uh, prior to that as well, um, photography wise, it's more of a, uh, a needed term that we've utilized over the last eight years of doing this now. Um, as we've developed as a marketing company and a branding agency, um, we've needed it, whether it's for the content development or for the uh, for the website build outs and so on. So we would usually hire somebody like Brian, who's way better at it than us, but we definitely know how important it is. Awesome. Well, thanks for being here, Warren. Mike, you're up. Yeah, I am Mike Semenek. I am the uh, co-founder and marketing director for Dissolver. We're a brewing company out in Asheville, North Carolina. We're actually right in downtown, beautiful space. Uh, Mike, I think your audio I pretty just... much handle like, like all of our marketing directions. I'm also like essentially Crave director. I run, a, I run our, I do a lot of our graphics. I run our social media. Uh, I'm from a advertising background, mostly on the creative side. So I've, Ooh, I'm gonna freeze out here. <laughs> oh no, you're a little blurry, but I think we uh, can I'll hear keep you going right. just in case where I'm not frozen. But uh, yeah, I've come from a creative background and I've uh, done a lot of that stuff prior to opening the business. And then, uh, you know, after launching, I've kind of taken this baby as my own brand and kind of run from there. And I think Mike's having a little trouble with the internet right now, but Dissolver I know has been recognized for having one of the top brewery Instagrams quite a few times. So they get a lot of recognition there. Now, Simon, I'm glad you're joining us today all the way from Wisconsin. So I'm excited to, you know, have our CBP connects there and I'm excited to meet you. But tell us a little yeah, bit about what you do to, uh, in the world of beer and, you know, why photography is important to you. Yeah, for sure. Uh, so um, I'm one of the co-owners and brewers of Venture Brewing Company, uh, which we are a coffee roastery and a beer brewery here in Milwaukee. Uh, Milwaukee has a ton of uh, really good coffee as far as the coffee scene goes. And we are just kind of a small, um, very um, kind of a... a Taking, taking a similar approach to coffee as we do with our beer. So we rotate our origins, we rotate our roasts, the processes and so on, as well as uh, the beer is, uh, we are a five barrel brew house. So we don't, don't produce a ton, uh, which allows us to create a lot of different brands, um, which in turn needs to be kind of marketed, photographed, and then um, uh, kind of disseminated uh, via social channels and so on. And, uh, I was I was a wedding photographer for 11 years before this um, and did everything from products to headshots to uh, in, in, in Wisconsin, you have to kind of be uh, you got to be creative during winter because nobody gets married <laughs> in the winter. Yes, sir. 
it's a little bit, it's a little bit cold here. So uh, doing everything from uh, doing all, all, all sorts of, of photography. Um, and then when we started, uh, when we started venture, it just kind of made sense to take that uh, and, and run with that, use our, use my scale to uh, kind of help uh, move the brand forward and get our information out to people. Well, I'm very excited to learn from all of you today. We're going to start very big picture in general. So we'll begin, you know, how can using high quality photography impact the brewery? Take it any direction you like, but we'll talk a little bit about the importance of high quality photography and the impact it can make. I always kind of look back at, you know, I go back to this, this um, term, the scroll stop, you know, what's going to make people when they're waking up in the morning or, you know, having lunch, um, what is going to make them stop and like interrupt their, you know, their doom scrolling. And one of the best ways to do that is just with high quality imagery. I think it's, it's sometimes seen as kind of a second, you know, an afterthought, you know, we need to have our socials. Um, we, we should just post phone, phone pictures, whatever. Um, it's, it's kind of put on the back burner or if it's prioritized at all. And those who are investing in it, those who are actually spending uh, the time to create that content can stick out uh, fairly easily. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I, I totally agree with Bryant there. Uh, and what I love to interject with the, as far as taking high quality photos for us, it's always awesome. And it's like, what can I do uh, to take that photography a little further? So at Dissolver, what I try to do is always blend it with some sort of graphic uh, or, you know, add, add a little bit more illustration to these things. And I feel like, you know, in combination, a good photo is always going to be freaking awesome. But then adding a little bit more uh, uh, either illustration or uh, any kind of uh, visual graphic to kind of perk up that interest just even more. Uh, I found a lot of success with that. No, Mike, was that something you always intended to do in your social channels or is it something you that's evolved over time? Uh, I think, yeah, pretty much been doing that since the get go. And then even, you know, I'd say I, I've come from more of a graphics heavy background versus uh, photography. Like I, I picked up, you know, photography uh, a couple of years prior to opening the business here and uh kind of fell in love, but it was just uh, made made more of, made that magic once I started combining graphics in with that too. Um, you know, and then even earlier on when we we're just like kind of getting the branding going and stuff like that, it's like didn't necessarily have a lot of product around to, to like take photos of. So uh, leaning on more of a graphical side was uh, super important for us. But once the photography started flowing in and stuff, that's like, really started to uh show through not only just like what i was digging i think we may be losing mike again their photography is great lost but they're again the <laughs> yeah so simon we'll go to you on that one you know what's the impact been of photography on your brewery yeah um i mean it's it's really interesting to to just have people look through um, whenever you're looking through an Instagram, uh, you know, what makes you stop? What makes you look at that and, and, and kind of read the text, right? Um, how do you communicate what it is that's happening or what, do you, what, what are you trying to communicate to people? Um, and for us, whenever we have a new beer release, you know, people see that image, um, you know, and kind of like Bryant was saying, it's a scroll stopper, you know, something that looks different than your brother's kid and different than, um, <clears throat> you know, a, a bar down the street uh, posting, you know, a really, really bad shot of a tiki cocktail. What's going to make that person stop and then read the text or or can you communicate what's happening uh, in that image? And, it, and do you want to look at it for more than a couple of seconds? The, the weird reality is that, you know, media is consumed very quickly and then it's dismissed or at least uh, images and specifically on Instagram or Facebook um, or any other uh, uh, platform that you're using. So it has to be high impact quickly. 
um, because they're going to see it and then it's going to kind of be thrown away. Does it leave a lasting impression? And in, in my mind, whenever you look at images that are done well, or at least that are lit properly, that have uh, some form of, uh, you know, focus, uh, it, it communicates what you need to communicate much quicker uh, than something that's kind of a wide shot of something that's nondescript that doesn't really have any uh, shine or polish to it. And that's really good insight there, Simon. Now, Warren, what about you? You know, you work with a lot of different breweries. Why is photography important to them? So I actually it was going to add on to a little bit of what Mike and Simon are kind of touching on, too. So uh, in terms of what Mike was saying about the design aspect that he likes to add, I think a, a big piece of doing that high quality photography is to also kind of add your own twist or do or tie into that photography. What makes it about your product, right? What makes it about your brand? Similar to what Simon and them do with a lot of their photography as well and their, their product launches, but also not just something that isn't, uh, is just a, a random shot of a cool beer, but potentially something that's tying back to the community or tying back to their brand that when someone's scrolling it to Bryant's point too, is it, it's that scroll stopper, but it also is something that they know why they're stopping in the back of their brain or subconsciously. They know they're stopping because it looks like something from Venture or from Dissolver or from whoever else because – and that's who they care about. That's why they follow you. So that's what I would like to add. We're going to dive a little bit more into that in a little bit. But I love to hear what all of you, your breweries or your businesses, what are people taking picture of right, of right now that's successful? Like, What does your Instagram social feed look like? What types of pictures? Is it beer? Is it events? Is it people? What does that look like for all four of you? I'll go. I think, yeah, sure. Sorry. Um, I think to me, from what I'm seeing success with and what a lot of our clients have seen success with is, again, to reiterate where I was going already in that previous comment, but to, to a little dive in there is more of what is, um, you know, driving people. So the experience right now, right? Can I capture something that is my brand experience in a picture? Uh, that's where we're seeing the most success or that my brand voice in that picture, even if the words say two things, something that makes people go, Hey, uh, I love this brand. Why are they asking me to look at this today? Um, the same thing with the people behind the company, people behind the brand. We're seeing a lot of success there. Um, and I think we're seeing a lot of success too. when whenever it's a new and exciting product or new and exciting, uh, venture, or maybe just a, a, a fun photo of the team, people are liking to see those too, but I'm sure everybody else has a million of the other ones in my brain. I'll let y'all tell me too. Dogs, dog pictures. Uh, yeah, everybody <laughs> loves beer and dogs. Yeah, I would say, you know, echo that with Warren is, is people. We're really trying uh, for, for one of our um, clients out here in Madison, we're really trying to get the people at the forefront. You know, we started this franchise um, last year, uh, just essentially just employee profiles, staff profiles of like, here's the faces behind the bar. Uh, those have done really well. I mean, even even telling stories behind you know, why she picked this specific charity to, to benefit her beer. Um, it just, just really creating more of a connection because again, like you see, you see beer picks all the time. Um, a lot of what makes the brewery, the brewery is the staff and the people and especially getting the owners. We've had not a hard time, but it's just been, we've had to be a lot more cognizant about like, let's get the owners in front of the camera. Like every time there's a shot of, of, you know, Zachariah and Koga, um, they, people just love it because they, you know, they've, they've fallen in love with the brand and the brand is, is the owners. Um, so it's, it's faces, it's faces and people. Mike, how about you? Yeah, I'd uh, agree with a lot of that. It's definitely, uh, you know, as being the person running our social, I get a lot of, uh, I pretty much take over all the community management. So, you know, what I get to see is like a ton of people enjoying our product for sure. And that's definitely a, uh, uh, I think uh, been able to help me push the brand in the direction I've gone in. I've been, you know, from day one was definitely more interested in approaching our stuff in a tongue in cheek manner and like really exploring how goofy I can get with some brands, like how heavy metal I can get with others and stuff. And, um, you know, to see how people uh, respond to that directly. I, I get messages all day long to, uh, about showing the beer and showing the beer off and then also getting like more of our experiential parts of it. Like, so our events and like 
you know, our tap room decor, we have like a 12 foot skeleton that sits downstairs that we're always like redressing depending on the type of events or the type of year it is. Uh, we just recently dressed it up as a, uh, uh, a, a vampire. We were doing a twilight pride party. So it had that with a big like balloon, uh, uh, balloons that spelt out, uh, uh, what is it? the skin of a killer because that's like one of the famous lines from that that franchise and uh yeah we get a lot of that and that's it's always really really cool but it's also like been helpful to look at that stuff as as the person like guiding most of the artwork for our labels like when i first started off i i wanted to play more uh into the the artwork factor of our our beers and i used to put the brand name like on the side of the can kind of like separate from the artwork and I thought that would be cool but then I started getting all these photos of just the name and no beer no no artwork on that beer and so I've been able to like like rethink that now I incorporate the brand name way more into the the artwork itself because it's like oh that just takes a better picture like and exposes the artwork and the brand name to a greater audience and that's something I would have never uh picked up on if I wasn't like using uh if i wasn't the community manager as well yeah so that's a really interesting point mike how about you simon yeah, my photography and other people's photography really helps yeah yeah i think i think mike brings up a, a really good point um just on on photographing or how he's how he switched his labels um we've we've done something similar uh to where you know it, Thinking through design, um, or at least the design of our can art, it was how do we communicate what's happening in a photo? Uh, and and if you're taking pictures of a can with a label, and other people are taking pictures of a can with that label, is it is it accurately communicating what what that is? Um, so I, I yeah I think that's a great point, Mike. Uh, just kind of how everything kind of works in conjunction together. Um, for for us, we because we're a coffee roastery and coffee shop as well, we um, have drink specials or uh, special lattes or, or different uh, things that we do. And whenever we post, um, it, it, social media kind of helps um, guide uh, some of that. It, people drink with their eyes first. So if you're, if you're asking someone to come into your tap room, uh, you need to give them a real good reason why. Uh, so when whenever we post something that has kind of a layered uh, look to it or is, um, you know, taken in a, uh, a space that feels comfortable um, or has colors that are, are uh, kind of welcoming, that's something that we see a lot of um, a lot of action on, uh, which is great uh, and a lot of interaction on. Um, we also have a handful of, of beers that are of the same series. It's a fruited Berliner, um, but it, the fruits change all the time. And so whenever we post one of those, there's always a lot of comments, people are, who are who are talking about it um, just based on what the name is. Um, and so making sure that that is front and center on our post of uh, so that people know that that's the beer, that's the brand. Uh, and then they start to interact with that pretty, pretty uh, aggressively. When you all consider everything that you're going to post on social media, are you following like a certain mix? Like, you know, a quarter beer, a quarter tap room, a quarter brew house, a quarter event. So, you know, are you doing it like in percentages somewhat like that and trying to follow a rough guide or how do you decide what content you're putting out there? I think if I had if I had more time, I would <laughs> I would probably follow a guide. Uh, but most of the time it's what do I need to communicate right now? Um, being a smaller smaller place and doing um, really wearing a lot of hats. Uh, I have one one other co-owner and he he also wears quite a few hats, uh, but I do a lot of the social. Uh, it's it's kind of what do we need? What's happening right now, uh, and and how do we get that? Uh, either get in front of what is going to happen. Um, or what is happening right now that we need to, or upcoming this week that we need to let people know about. Um, and so it ends up being a mix of kind of everything. We host a lot of, um, 
kind of events or pop-ups, things like that. So making sure that our our reel is full of, or that our, our story is full of that. Um, so making sure that we're taking photos that are going on our story or that can be used as kind of a dual purpose. Uh, if we're taking a photo of uh, a beer that's going to go on social media, letting people know there's a new release, making sure I have four different vertical photos, either of that board, beer being poured, uh, the can vertically, so that those can go on to the story over time, over the weekend. Um, so when I'm, when I'm looking at a product release, I'm looking at kind of making sure that I'm getting multiple angles of something so I can continue to use that uh, with only having to invest time into one photo shoot. Um, but it, uh, other than that, I, I generally try not to kind of overload people's feeds, not post seven things to our to our feed a day, use the story for, uh, you know, mass uh, uh, content, but then uh, making sure that what's going on with the reel uh, looks like something that we would post as well as uh, feels that way in the in the text that we're we're writing. For, uh, for us, I, I feel like we, we try to make it as, as best we can uh, strategically decided in terms of the content mix. So we're looking at the analytics, we're looking at whatever data that we can uh, that's coming in through the socials to identify what's doing the best, what's performing the best in terms of the imagery types and uh, even the graphic types, and then trying to mimic that or trying to replicate that, right? If we know that people are doing really good right now or that a product is doing really good, we try to do our best to do that while also keeping in mind that well shit happens in this industry so to simon's point it might be random that day but i know i need to get this out um for the most part we i i know we are trying to do as best we can to follow the, the analytics side and make sure that we're keeping up with that but at the end of the day whatever is uh, needed is also pretty important too warren i'm really curious to pick your brain on this one because you work with quite a few brands are different breweries finding different types of pictures, imagery that works best? Or are you seeing trends that everybody's, you know, experiencing right now? I think I think everybody's doing something uh, again unique to their brand, right? The the ones that are doing it really well are doing it really good to their brand. So, you know, one brand might not have the same success with really crisp and clean and just sexy imagery as another brand might do better with more people and smiles and the beer is there, but it's just the beer is there because maybe their brand is seen as more of a enjoy with your friends brand, or maybe uh, the people care less about the product in that brand. Not saying that that's a bad thing or a good thing, but maybe they care more about the newest release or they care more about this. So everybody's brand's different. Uh, I think I honestly, I can't think about one brand who, or one thing that is working for all of the brands aside from, um, more images of, of people and, and and people enjoying your products and and ownership or you know leaders uh, back house team you know leaders in the team or bartenders that everyone knows like all that is pretty much universally successful uh, because they love the people that they know or that they think they know um, but other than that I think keeping it unique to your brand is is huge right now. I would agree with a lot you just said there, Warren. And directly in Crafted Professionals, we see pictures of smiling faces. They, they always do consistently well. Yeah. Mike, when you're looking at your mix of pictures on social, you know, do you think about how much you're going to do of each type of image? Mike, you might be frozen again. So, Brian, I'll let you take that one. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think for us, uh, you know, and and right now we're working monthly with one one specific client up here, so it, it is a little bit more kind of of, of tunnel vision. I certainly see what Warren and have seen what Warren uh, was talking about, where it's it's definitely brand specific, um, and also also region specific too. I think there's there's kind of a certain amount of you know, keeping up with the Joneses, if you want to call it that, you know, brands want to do what other brands are doing and they feel like is working, um, you know, whether it works or not. Um, for me, it's, it's really just about, I think the data is important, you know, first and foremost. Um, I'm, I'm certainly a, a visual, a visual person. So just take, even just taking a look at the grid, if, if we're doing, you know, an audit of a new client or if we're doing an audit of a potential client, like just taking a look at at the bigger picture. Cause again, you can, like Simon said, like you can just get so focused in on just the day to day, like this shit needs to go out that you don't even realize that 
three days, four days ago, you posted something that looks the exact same. So you zoom out again, like it's like, it's the forest for the trees. You kind of miss the forest because you're, you're just trying to get this thing out and you're not even thinking about the overall aesthetic, the aesthetic of the grid, the Instagram grid, or um, just, just people's visual, um, just being like burnout, like visual burnout of like the exact same stuff. And, you know, one of my clients said, you know, people know what the top of our bar looks like. We don't need to take any more pictures uh, on the top of our bar. Um, that was one of the big, you know, pushes towards um, us working with them was getting a lot more of a diverse kind of photo set and, and visual set. Because again, how many damn pictures on the top of the bar can you post of, of a pint? Like we get it. We understand that. Let's take it out into the, into the world next to a lake. Let's, let's do this and that. So it's really just about the larger goal, the larger goal. Are we, and again, this client, we're focusing a lot more on storytelling. You know, people know the beer. They've been around for 10 years. They understand uh, what their flagships are. It's it's now like the story that we need to kind of rekindle with some of these followers that they, you know, they know some of the offerings. They know most of their offerings. Uh, they have kind of those new small batch releases and, and occasional distribution. But getting into uh, the specific stories has been important for this client. And again, making sure that you're not you're not posting very similar looking things just back out a little bit back out for a day and just audit even audit your own performance audit like hey we've been pushing the exact same looks you know in our on our photography like hey let's let's get weird with it you know i'll go look on some some beer photography inspirational um, instagram pages or websites and just be like oh i need to step i need to step my game up a little bit you know mike's killing it over there simon's doing some good work um i i need to i need to maybe know up my game a little bit too so we kind of all keep each other um a little bit sharp yeah i definitely think it's important to look outside your own brand for inspiration so mike you know on the dissolver front what's the content mix like on your socials yeah uh these days i've been uh i, I play in that realm of constantly self-auditing what we're doing and then at the same time like simon uh being like like a chicken with his head cut off like i gotta get this out right now um yep. But yeah, we're always playing with a good mix of like some some graphics only stuff. Here's a here's a bit of photography, and now we've started working um, more and more to like add uh, uh, more video content to our mix here. So uh, either a variety of like poor shots, and then uh, more skated kind of pieces and stuff, like hopping on a, a trend here every, every once in a while. Just kind of did our take on the Wes Anderson little day in a life thing. If, if you have a chance to check out ours, I feel like I added a nice twist to ours. Mm -hmm. um, but like, yeah, definitely trying to keep, keep our mix of content rolling. That's not, yeah, always just here's the new beer this week, but um, yeah, trying to, uh, again, like introduce a bit more story to what's going on. Uh, you know, my, my goal for the next, uh, the next part of this year is to offer more of an insight to our, our staff and uh, what we're, we're planning on doing with newer expansions with the, with the company. So yeah, it's, it's like just trying to uh, offer a, a large amount of uh, uh, diverse content while, while always coming back to the, the idea that we are selling products here and we'd love for our customers to pick them up and enjoy them. So it sounds like there's not a formula everyone listening can follow. And that's probably a good thing because every brewery, you know, stands for something different, has different messaging, different stories to tell. But at the end of the day, your brewery photography, it reflects your brewery's values and shows the lifestyle you want associated with your brand. Do you all have any tips for maintaining this consistency that aligns with, you know, your brand values and, you know, what you aim to put out there? You know, it's, it's helpful, you know, if you can have it, you know, have a social style guide. I think there's a lot of sort of foundational work that a lot of breweries just haven't gotten into, you know, kind of going back into feeling like updated visuals are more of a luxury or, or more of a thing that, you know, that's, that's not something that we do, whatever it is. I think it's though important to have a, again, going back to like that, that forest for the trees thing, like knowing your larger brand and being able to fit it in with your website, like what your website looks like and sounds like what your tap room looks and sounds and smells like, and then what your social, these should be a seamless experience across all of these. So if you've done, 
branding uh, work just for your brand as a whole, you know, pick pieces out of that to make a smaller uh, social style guide. And then, um, you know, controlling who posts, this is getting more, maybe a little bit more into like the, the gears turning of the social. You're getting into my next question, Brian. Don't give, okay, I'll, I'll hold off on that one then. But social style guide, yeah, is certainly um, a great way forward for that is, is just kind of making sure everybody who's involved is marching uh, in the same in the same way. My add to that would be strategy and planning, planning and strategy. Let's, uh, if you can start planning out your posts a little bit ahead of time, even if they yep. change, the more planning, the more strategy development behind what you're going to be releasing the next week, the easier it gets to take those photos, the easier it gets to plan what photography you need for the next two or three weeks. You know, we, Andrew, you make fun of me because of my Asana use, but any of those platforms that we can use to build out that plan and have it where you can go down that list and know Simon, for example, what pictures he needs to take for the next two weeks, he can start working on those. And then when the day comes and he has to scramble, it's not that big of a deal. He's like, oh yeah, I got to scramble. But my other four posts this week, I got those photos last week. We're good. I'm chilling. Yeah. yeah. Say, uh, go ahead, Mike. Oops, sorry, Simon. If you can have as much fun as possible while creating this stuff, if you know, you gotta, gotta love what you're doing too. So if, if you can go into it with like, uh, you know, vigor and enthusiasm behind your project, it's going to make it so much easier. So if you uh, are not that person, maybe, you know, it's, it's time to give Brian Warren a call, you know, find, find you that person that's going to enjoy making your, your brand look as cool as possible on on tone and uh you know ready to shine through like the thick of of our social platforms you know and mike scrolling through your social on your instagram it all has the same same feel you know how do you kind of do what brian said is state of those brand guidelines do you have anything written down do you have anything that you just abide by to make sure it all feels dissolver-esque yeah uh i don't personally have anything written down but i'm creating it so it's just like what my gut says <laughs> essentially and um you know I, I do have people that will chime in with work and stuff like that but it's still uh i can be a little bit of you know I, I turn my art director hat on and uh really guide the project and it's like you know my my directions are maybe a little bit different from most it's like doesn't have enough like you know skeletons or eyeballs in this image or something like that um so yeah it can, it can be different um uh, i i can be a little bit more of a harsh critic here and there but i really like uh like like i was coming back to just trying to have as much fun with a, a project as possible and if it's if it's not conveying like that idea that's where i'm feeling like i run into trouble and it's like oh maybe i just need to scrap this all together and start like a little bit fresh with what what I'm going after here, but then it's still still deadlines. You gotta you gotta get it out there. So it's like you know um, you know maybe not everything's a fully hundred percent like baked, but uh, you know you try to aim for that. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks, Mike. Simon. Yeah, I, uh, I think what Mike said makes a lot of sense. Resonates. Um, I think also just using what you have. Um, smaller companies, smaller breweries are probably not going to be able to, you know, hire uh, Warren and Bryant, or or get their own social media person. And truthfully, I think it, like we, I guess we were fortunate that this was something that I did uh, before before we started. And, and truthfully. Uh, my business partner as well is a, is a wonderful photographer. He just ends up wearing a different hat. Um, so the, this was the one that was kind of uh, thrust onto my head, but using what you have, you know, it, it's, I think in general, it's better to post something than nothing. Um, but if you can make that something look consistent, look like your brand and then communicate what you want to communicate, uh, you know, it, it, uh, we talked about it kind of on the last question, but making sure you're looking at other places and other images so that you can start to pull from that. And if you're not good with photography or good at um, kind of setting up an image and taking it, get better. 
you know, it, people who who are in business have to get better at the things that they're doing or find somebody else to do it. Um, there's also a lot of people in your immediate community uh, who are following your profile that may do social media really well. And that might be something that you can shop out for an okay price um, so that you don't have to do that uh, or you don't have to do that as much. But also having the conversation with them about saying, hey, this is what our brand is. This is who we are. And this is what we need to portray. So having having a brand guideline at, at minimum, having having an understanding of who and what your business is and the values that you have uh, that can be portrayed. You know, everyone, we've heard the term consistency come up so much doing this, you know, and looking at, you know, how are you going to get these pictures, these images for your brewery? Do you all recommend having a dedicated person whose specific role is doing this? How much time should they be spending? Do they need, you know, a fancy phone or camera? Let's talk about like getting started. What do you recommend for a brewery who's really looking to up their game on social with regard to staffing, timing, and equipment? Andrew, are you asking me if uh, you think a brewery should pay me to do their social? Is that what you're <laughs> they asking? recommend Brian at Full Pour Media, right? Uh, right. Um, I, I was actually gonna gonna tack on to Simon's thing, uh, but this is this is a perfect answer to that. Is there's so many like the the barriers to entry now are so low when it comes to just like doing a little better of content creation. I mean, get a white sweep backdrop, you know, from Amazon. That product photography is huge now. Get, I wish I had it sitting here. It's in my car, but just a little mobile, uh, mobile phone, you know, smartphone video kit is 200 bucks. You know, just making that initial first effort, uh, again, like, like you said, you know, plants the seeds for a good basis of content that you can grow off of like that. Like if you want to do a reel, have a little top light on it. Like you're, you're doing better than 90% of the people out there. If you just put a damn little top light on, on your thing and have a little microphone. Um, it, it's, it's so easy nowadays to go on go on Amazon, go on all these, these camera shop, uh, websites and just get, you know, live stream setup kit. And there's, you know, a, a, a ring light, like I've, I've got here that just makes your face that much brighter when you turn it on. Like these little things, uh, do make the difference and they've become so affordable that, you know, I almost say like, can you afford not to, you know, can you afford not to do this? Should you, should you really be kind of looking like your Bush league? I, I know you don't get into this business because you want to look like your Bush league, make a little bit of a, of a content investment. Yeah. And to, to add to that too, man, I think, um, you know, taking that time of uh, getting education on, I mean, there's a bunch of little yeah. points that you can learn how to take really good photos with an iPhone, not saying you're going to be on the same level, as Brian or Simon or anybody or even Mike on the side of like actually capturing really good imagery without a nice camera, but you can do a lot better. And I think the other side of that, that I was going to add to Simon and, and that still is relevant with this question is even for the smaller breweries, if you, if you listen a little bit here and still take into account some of that planning uh, mindset, some of that like building out of a calendar mindset, you will have a lot more time to get creative, to have more fun with it, and to learn this. You don't have to stress over it. If you're, if you're at least looking at the next week's where the stuff, you know it's ahead of you, you can practice. You can work with somebody in a tap room, maybe a bartender who likes to side hustle as as a iPhone photographer, right? I mean, you can make it better uh, without having to come and pay me or Brian or somebody like us to do this kind of stuff because I'm just paying Brian anyway. Hell yeah. Uh, <laughs> So let, yeah, let's look at it from the brewery perspective. Mike and Simon, you both are doing this in-house. For a brewery to hit the quality levels or at least up their game, what do they need to do? Like staff-wise, is it just a bartender? Is it a marketing person? What do you all recommend for breweries? And what yeah, you I, I definitely think it's it's wise to find someone to lead that charge for sure. Uh, and that person can easily, like if if they're leading, they can, they can bring in other people to help and that's you know more help with this stuff the better you're, you're gonna get you're gonna get out of it um but it's definitely you know a, a thing you can do from any scale like we went from you know uh, we're a little bit bigger but we only started with like three people you know i was one of them 
but you know you you can definitely do it and i'd say the more you start playing around with photography the the more you're gonna like it it's a very addictive thing uh, you know especially if you start getting into learning about gear and stuff like that you can easily like consume your life and dangerous path right? <laughs> start buying and yeah. filling out those empty garages like you know just clear the homebrew equipment over and just add another like little photo setup now uh but it yeah it, it, it can be a lot of fun uh once you get into it and if it's if it's not you know at least you'll have an idea of like what you can uh what you should be going for and uh who you can find to do that mike equipment wise are you taking pictures on a fancy camera or are you taking pictures on like an iphone or something what are you um you know an iphone is definitely especially the ones that are coming out now are like freaking awesome with those portrait modes and stuff but i started with like the panasonic gh4 which is i think over 10 years old now and you could scoop those up for like a couple hundred bucks uh and they they're nice you can get different lenses for them and stuff and uh uh what's cool about them is they they work well for not only photos but for video content too so yeah and if you're going down video stuff just shoot everything in slow-mo it looks cooler <laughs> Batman, how yeah. about you what are you using uh i'm using a canon r6 uh with some pretty expensive lenses but uh and then just just a uh really simple uh speed light setup with a kind of small soft box and that gets the majority that gets me the majority of the things that i need um granted you could still do all of that with something that had you know with with a, a a Google Pixel on portrait mode. Uh, it's it's shocking how well that cam, that phone, and even iPhones, the newer iPhones on portrait mode, how well they uh, kind of take a scene, render it, and then are able to find the subject. Um, and then I, I post process in Lightroom, but you there's a million different ways that you can post process. Uh, even on the Google phone, you can remove people uh, from backgrounds. You can do a lot of things uh, on very, I, I don't want to say it's cheap equipment because phones aren't necessarily cheap, but they're things that we all, um, almost everybody has. So while it's not cheap, it's an investment that we have for our general life. Uh, that we can then use as something that is uh, able to, to sell another beer. And truthfully, the whole point of social media for a business is to sell more of what you make, right? Um, and, and whether that's by communicating who you are, whether that's by communicating your, um, you know, your ethos or, or just communicating the things that you're making, the whole point is to reach people and have them either come into your tap room or pick up a beer from the shelf uh, that has your name on it. Um, so I, I, I think I think finding, you know, I, I mean, some of the simplest things is taking your phone, finding some real, real nice, soft, indirect light. Um, so whether that's next to a window that doesn't have the sun beating, beating in on you, uh, or it's uh, outside underneath the shade of a tree or the shade of a building, um, but finding, finding ways to utilize the light that you have in order to create a better image. And then, you know, if you've been able to figure out how to brew beer, you can easily figure out how to make a better photograph. It's a lot less complicated. Um, so I, I, I think there's, there's a million YouTube uh, videos on how to do, you know, better iPhone photography. There's a lot of things that you can buy. You know what Brian said, there's a million things on Amazon that you can purchase for very cheap to up, uh, you know, to make your, your, your phone into a better camera. Um, I think also having, you know, like what Mike said, having somebody who's dedicated to doing that. Um, so whether that's you or, uh, whether that's hiring someone or or um, kind of investing in a relationship that would be able to do that for you. I think having that dedicated person, again, going back to a consistent look, going back to um, kind of a, a consistent voice helps kind of smooth that out as well. 
So thanks, Simon. A lot of really great insight there. Does anyone else have any favorite resources, whether it be a program you like to use, whether it's a YouTube series that you found valuable, whether it's a filter you think makes pictures look awesome? Are there any, I hate to say cheap tricks, like Simon hated to say cheap, but, you know, are there any little hacks that you think can be valuable for people, you know, looking to do more photography? I think I think one thing Simon actually mentioned uh, that I would I would immediately pick up for anyone out there and Brian you probably got a lot more uh, recommendations than I think you're, you're the photographer, photographer expert here but um, something like Lightroom can can cha drastically change all of your imagery if you can sit down and learn how to use it there are a lot of tutorials on how to use Lightroom um, I you know you can get other apps that are pretty similar and free. Uh, but I mean, you, if you can learn the lighting side and learning how to do that with your phone before you can afford to pay someone, that's the optimal situation. If you have someone doing this for you, it'll save you a lot of time. But if you can't, that's fine. Or if you don't want to, that's fine. But Lightroom or something like it could be a game changer for you once you figure out that lighting too. Yeah, there's like you know, think about mobile too, like the Snapseed app. Yeah, I, I think I think. Um, uh, apps now, or just what do you call it, native apps? You know, the Photos app on the iPhone um, is is powerful. Uh, but even using kind of like those third party apps, or if you're in video, like doing CapCut, um, things that are mobile friendly that are just kind of quick. Um, I believe actually uh, Adobe Lightroom has a, a mobile app too that I've I've thrown my own mobile photos in there and, and kind of done some tweaking, similar to how I would have done it on. Uh, on the computer, um, but like I said, Snapseed is, is a great one for photos. That's that's not. Adobe, I mean, Adobe can be expensive. Uh, you know, it's kind of it's that it's that uh, subscription model. There's plenty of free uh, or or reduced cost things out there for you. Um, I would certainly start there and light it. Like, you can't like if you light something, you could take if you light something well. If you learn how to light something well, you don't need to edit it. It's it's just done. You know, it's if it's if it looks good. You almost don't need a third-party editor. So I think, yeah, learning those basics and then having the right tools uh, on the front end. Yeah, Brian, that's a really interesting point you make there. Like, So how important is it to have someone who has a good eye for pictures? Can someone just come in and randomly shoot their phone, or does someone need to have a certain set of skills where they can pick out what they should be shooting? Um, you know, I, I think it's – I mean, Warren brought it up too, is, is – teach yourself you know there's there's cameras camera shops in almost every major town uh, you know every major city um, that give you know amateur photography lessons there are like photography meetups there you know I've been a part of a couple you know beer go to go to a brewery and nerd out about camera stuff and maybe take beer shots maybe just kind of socialize um, there are so many good uh, low cost or free uh, self-education courses that it's not it's certainly not necessary um, but again if you're asking me if you should pay a professional yes you should always pay a professional <laughs> to take your your photos warren you got something to add to this one oh i'm good i mentioned i mentioned lightroom but to, but to brian's you know last point there of just of teaching yourself and learning i think it, there should be you, know, you should be able to identify you or yourself or yourself or someone who does have an eye for it, or at least learn to have an eye for it. Teach yourself to have an eye for it. Go study uh, Dissolver Venture. You know, uh, Allagash is probably one of my favorite um, beer Instagrams in the country. Uh, they do a great job at it, and then they do a lot of a lot of community driven photography too, which is really cool. Um, but you're not going to be as good as half of those guys, and especially you know not as some of these guys here on this call. Um, but you can try to be, and as long as you're trying, that's it. Awesome. Simon, anything else? Yeah, I think um, <clears throat> educating yourself is huge because then you know what you're getting. Even if you don't necessarily want to take the time to figure out how to do photography and you end up hiring someone, you need to educate yourself to know that what you're getting is quality, right? Uh, if you don't have an eye for photography, that's fine, which I think that's, you know, debatable. I think it's, it's a learned skill. Um, and whether or not that's something that you innately gravitate towards, that's a different story. But I think taking time to educate yourself on what it is, how much time it should take, uh, what, you know, what something should look like and what you actually want something to look like. Uh, Cause if you hire somebody and, you know, you go to, you know, seven different social media sites and say, I want something that looks similar to this, uh, you should at least be able to disseminate or discern that 
this does not look like this? Um, or is that person, person capable of delivering what it is that you want? Um, so having, having a vision or having an idea um, and taking time to educate yourself, at least on the basics, I think is very beneficial, especially for someone who's a small business owner who you, you can't always do everything well. So if you're going to hire someone to do it, make sure you at least have a little bit of information uh, so that when you're hiring that person, they're going to deliver what what it what you want and, and they're going to sell sell more beer for you. Awesome. Well, today this conversation has been really fun. It's been a little bit different than some of our other conversations. Often I feel like at the end I have to say, you know, what's one actionable takeaway you want everyone listening to do? But I feel the entire conversation has been little tips and advice that you all have offered from your experience that can be really valuable to everyone listening today. So what I would like to end with instead of that one last tip is, you know, what's something at your business that you are really proud of that photography has accomplished for you? And if you'd like to shout out your contact information or your social handles, that would be fantastic as well. And Bryant, we started with you. We end with you. You get no prep time. Yeah, got to end with me. All right. Um, something that uh, photography has gotten for us is um, is awards. You know, I, I would say, you know, we're certainly not in it for, for the awards, but um, to be recognized by the Craft Beer Marketing Awards, by the Crushies for our creative work. Um, is certainly a good indication of the quality that we're putting out. You know, it's it's peer reviewed. Uh, I was on the the review board, um, you know, one of the the critique boards this year. Um, just so to so to be recognized by our peers um, is certainly something. You know, it's it's a great uh, value add for uh, for us for you know hiring and and scaling upwards, but also just just to talk about with clients too. Like, hey, we know we know our shit. We know what we're talking about. Um, we know how to tell good stories and and these and these you know these gold trophies uh, say so. Um, so I'd say that that's probably um, you know the the first thing that came to mind when it comes to you know where photography photography has gotten me this entire studio this entire office and studio where I'm at. So that's another great one as well. Awesome. Well, thanks, Brian. Always a pleasure to learn from you, Warren. I say uh, for me, photography might not be much about what it's gotten us, but what it's allowed us to do uh, as you know, we're mainly marketing and, and strategy development and design agency. So like for me, it's helped us do our job for our clients, for our customers, right? It's, it's working to, um, you know, develop um, the content that makes sense for those brands. And, and even in the ads, side, we're doing ads and the, the imagery that runs with the, that brand's image and that brand's voice and, and what, matters to that company so for us photography has really helped us um you know hone that in wherever we are throughout the country um and we're kind of scattered around at this point so uh without good photography um we couldn't do what we do uh, every day all over the country so i i love the the great photographers out there in the world who are uh kicking some butt and uh yeah i'm with bear marketeers so if you need anything holler thanks warren simon yeah, I think one of the things that was, um, or at least that I'm proud of, is like during during COVID um, and being shut down, we were still able to release beer from our tap room, um, and the communication and connection that we were able to have with our customers during that uh, was pretty stellar. Um, I'd post something and get a ton of traction, and then uh, by the end of the weekend when we released the beer on Friday, it would be gone by Sunday. Um, so just kind of seeing how, how, uh, you know, something that re is relatable to people that, that makes sense uh, to the people who are looking at it on top of being able to accurately communicate with them and feel like a real person um, is something that, that, that has been, um, I guess that, that I'm definitely proud of when it comes to our social media and, and the photography. Awesome. Well, thank you, Simon. And last but not least, Micah Dissolver. Yeah. Photography has uh, played a huge part in just our overall uh, brand and making our brand what it is today. So like, I'm very proud of what we've been able to do and like not only highlight our product, but to, to, you know, position ourselves as like a bigger creative company. So it's like, not only just pushing out beer, but pushing out interesting visuals and stuff like that, that uh, really uh, made our, our brand what it is today. And it's always cool when you post a cool picture and uh, beer starts 
flowing out and orders start coming in. So it, uh, from from being at a, a an owner's uh, point of view and uh, handling all this stuff, it's like, oh, putting my money where my mouth is with this creative stuff kind of really does uh, uh, benefit. So, yeah. And if you guys want to check out our stuff at Dissolver, we have our weird spelling. So D-S-S-O-L-V-R. We're there at all our handles pretty much. Uh, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok. I quit Twitter. You can hit me up there. I'll never answer. Uh, and then my personal stuff is Death Shakes. So you can check that out too. Awesome. Oh, yeah, well, like guys. Mike said, you know, pictures can lead to profits. And you all have offered a lot of really great insight today. So Brian, Warren, Simon, and Mike, I appreciate you sharing your insight on how beer and photography can be really valuable. And Brian, you have something to add right there. You're just nodding your head. No, I was I was doing the, the Al Borland salute. <laughs> well, excellent. Everybody, I appreciate you again, and we'll see you very soon. So thanks, everybody, yeah. for listening. Thank, Thank you. you. See you later.